So, been holding back on this uh, little adventure for a while, but it's been bothering me uh, quite a while, the talk about avoiding mixing and buffers on heat pumps. And I've always felt that this might be a little bit inappropriate and might be limiting good design. So I thought I'd run a little experiment through mathematically uh, using mixing theory to demonstrate my thoughts and um, let's do that now we'll go through it and see where we come to so um, let's see if I can right so heat pump and mixing well here is a little sketch of a uh, system design that I would like to do it's also a design that's uh, in the heat pump manuals it's certainly in the Panasonic one that I've just fitted um, in the design here we have the heat pump we have a buffer and we have two mixed zones now I've shown these both with uh, high temperature mixers or sorry variable temperature mixers not high temperature mixers um, but if you've got a good controlled system you would have a, a buffer sensor or a secondary flow sensor here which would probably make one of the mixers redundant now quick note on here this is on a heat pump, not on a gas boiler. On a gas boiler, you will invariably need to have a mixer on both circuits, um, as I've explained on another video. But for a heat pump, there's a good chance that uh, your radiator circuit, for example, would not need a variable temperature buffer uh, uh, mixer. Sorry. Now, the reason for that is that the buffer acts as a mixer. So when we get various flows through the buffer, the heat pump or the boiler, the heat source, will be targeting the correct flow temperature on this side of our buffer or low loss header or hydraulic separation to feed the circuit requiring the highest temperature. We obviously don't want the heat pump or the boiler running at a raised temperature uh, any more than it has to because this causes a reduction in efficiency. So. Anyway, I thought we'd have a look at a little system. This is a typical design I use all the time for my demonstration. So here we've assumed an eight kilowatt system and we've got four kilowatts on both circuits. Now I've chosen a weather comp ratio of 0.6 and one. I'll do a separate video on weather comp ratios. Actually, I don't think I've done one yet. So uh, I don't think people know what I'm talking about when I refer to that. Um, so we've got a design temperature, so 20 for the room, two for uh, minus two outside temperature, and that's going to give us a required flow temperature of 33 degrees and 40 degrees for our two circuits, and the flow within those circuits for both circuits at four kilowatts and delta T5 is going to be 0.19 meters, uh, liters per second, and the flow rate for the heat pump is going to be 0.38 it's worth noting at this stage, not your heat pumps have the same strategy. And what I've seen quite recently is quite a few of them have delta T pumps, delta T controls, and these work very accurately. So our secondary flow rate, however, is likely to be constant. So we would have a declining delta T on the secondary side while we were maintaining delta T on the primary side. And so the flow rate on the primary side would become uh, or always be lower than our secondary side. And this is the whole point of the post, really. So let's go through it. So we're going to calculate the flow post buffer. So we want to calculate the actual flow we're going to have in this circuit here. There's, the myth is that the flow on this side would be greater and that's not the case, but let's go through it. So the higher temperature circuit is likely not to require a variable temperature mixer on a heat pump design, but may be advantageous if the heat pump has no buffer temperature sensor. We can assume the higher temperature circuit, variable temperature mixer is open or not fitted, and the buffer is doing the required mixing. We know our buffer temperature is 40 degrees centigrade to supply the higher temperature circuit. The mixer is going to reduce the flow temperature to 33 for the lower temperature circuit. So that's our uh, starting point for our calculations. If we skip over a page. 
So what we have here is a, a little diagram of our lower temperature circuit that we're going to do the calculations on. And you can see here um, that we've laid out our flow one, temperature one, flow two, temperature two, flow three, and temperature three. And we know from the description on the other page that our initial flow temperature from the buffer will be 40 degrees. What we don't know is our flow. And we know our flow in the system is going to be 0.19 uh, litres per second. And we know our temperature in that circuit post mixer will be 33 degrees. We know we have delta T5. And so our return temperature will be 28, 33 less five gives us 28. So here we have flow two and temperature two. And what we're trying to establish is flow one here. So we have a t uh, the formula for mixing, which is F1 times T1 plus F2 times T2 equals F3 times T3. So that's the flow one times the temperature one plus flow two times temperature two is equal to flow three times T3. Nice simple formula. Many of the formulas we use are very simple and easy to use. And uh, this is not too far different. So if we then transfer the numbers we have down into the second line, we have F1 times 40 plus F2 times 28 equals 0.19 times 33. Now we have a problem here in as much as we've got two unknown values. But what we can do is we can eliminate one of those. We've got F3, value for F3, and we're looking for F1. So what we do know is that if we have F3 minus F1, it's equal to F2. So just here we've substituted F2 for F3 minus F1. So we can continue with the standard calculation. So now we've got F1 times 40 becomes 40 F1. And we've got plus F3 minus F1 times 28 equals 6.27, which is the answer from the 0.19 times 33. If we carry on down here, we can put our 19 back down in this. So we get 40 F1 plus 0.19 minus F1 times 28 equals 6.27. And if we go down solving further, we get 40 F1 uh, plus 5.32 minus 28 F1 equals 6.28. So what we've done here, we've just broken out the brackets. We've multiplied 0.19 by 28 to get 5.32. And we've multiplied F1 by 28 to get 28 F1. So the next line, 40 F1 minus 20 F1. So simply here, we've just transferred this across and we're going to reduce the 40 by the 28. Uh, plus 5.32 equals 6.27. So 40 minus 28 gives us 12. So it's 12 F1 plus 5.3 equals 6.27. Next line of our equation, 12 F1 equals 6.27 minus 5.3. So here where we've got the plus 5.3, we've transferred it to the other side of our equation where it becomes a minus. Then we've solved that problem to get the value of 0.95. Here we've got 12 times F1. So if we divide this side by 12, we cancel out this 12, we get F1 equals 0.95 divided by 12, giving us our solution of F1 equals 0 0.079. So um, if you want to go through that a few times to learn the formula, you're welcome. Or if you want to give me a call, if you need to use it, I'll uh, try and spare some time to go through the equation. So from here, um, if flow to one circuit is 0.19 litres per second, which is our higher temperature circuit, and the other is 0.079, our total flow post buffer is 0.269, and our primary flow is 0.38. So our primary flow is greater than our secondary flow and will always be the way in a heat pump system. Now, Adam of Heat Geek fame has made the term distortion popular when referring to mixing to highlight the impact of mixing causing a boiler or heat pump to run at a raised temperature, lowering efficiency. Now this is important to understand, but for many installers has ended up as a belief that mixing and hydraulic separation is to be avoided at all costs. And clearly this limits our ability to design well-controlled systems. So 
we really need to keep on top of understanding how mixing and certain design uh, techniques affect our um, our design outcomes and obviously it's going to be advantageous when fitting or retrofitting a heat pump onto a system that has both radiators and underfloor heating to be able to run these at different temperatures and I think a lot of people haven't done the calculation and they just assume they're going to get negative distortion and they're going to be sending the efficiency of their heat pump uh, down the toilet basically um, and this isn't the case. The flow on the secondary side, as long as you set it up and balance it correctly, will be lower than the, preset, the flow on the primary side. And therefore, there'll be no negative distortion. The heat pump can run at the temperature required for the higher temperature circuit and doesn't need to run higher than that. Saying that, heat pumps have some anti-cycling programs built in. And these are, of course, uh, aided by... Um, by buffer capacity or by volume system volume and by having the buffer in the system as in this design the flow rate of the heat pump uh, would likely to be dropping off uh, on a lot of heat pumps as it approaches the point at which it's cycling in which case it's going to be avoiding cycling because it's got the extra volume passing through from the buffer but it still has the full volume of water from the system uh, relative to the uh, heat load of the system so that's to say that we can still dissipate the relative uh, amount of energy around the system um, because our flow rate is constant on the secondary side um, right where am i from there so um so clearly we don't have a problem with distortion or, or negative mixing as I would prefer to call it. Um, so we can we can go ahead and we can put these designs in. I know that um, there's been some talk of avoiding these systems and there's even been some people recommending customers to, to remove buffers and mixers on systems when they've seen it and this is obviously not a, a, a good move. So let's be intelligent about what we're doing let's do the maths let's do the design work and put in systems that are designed to be fit for purpose so again uh, as always i'm very happy to take some criticism and some cross comments if you think i'm wrong make your comment um, i've never asked it before but like and subscribe give me a little bit of support for the channel and that'd be appreciated so um, i hope that helps thank you